Setting up a custom Docker file is one of the major steps to have an optimized Gitpod configuration tailored for your project. So let's take a quick look at how Gitpod determines the Docker image for your workspace. Suppose you are on a GitHub repository. Then you create a Gitpod workspace from it. Gitpod will at first check if a Gitpod ML file exists. If it exists and specifies a custom image, that image will be pulled by Gitpod and built once. However, if you don't have any Gitpod ML file, or even if you do, but no image is specified, then the default gitpod slash workspace pool image is selected. You can learn more about that image in the workspace images repository, link will be in the description. Here I have a repository hosting a Rust project. I'll use this as an example to show all the different ways you can use a custom docker image. I'll create a workspace for this repository. Now inside the workspace, I'll create a new terminal and run gp init command to ensure I have a gitpod ml. Skipping this as I already have one. To get started, we can directly reference a public image from Docker Hub through the image key followed by an image name and optionally the tag. Gitpod also maintains some foundational images highly optimized for gitpod workspaces. I would suggest using those over the other publicly available images. You can find them in the workspace images repository. So for this Rust project, I can use the image called Workspace Rust. To quickly check if my gitpod ML works, I can run gpvalidate command. It will build a debug workspace with this new configuration. It looks like the build is complete and it launched the debug workspace for me in a new tab. I can confirm that my gitpod ML works since the workspace started. I'll close the debug workspace, then press Ctrl C on my main workspace to stop the debug workspace. To permanently save such a configuration, go ahead and push the gitpod ml file to your repository. Then gitpod will use your committed configuration every time a new workspace is created for your repository. But I won't do that just yet as I have more changes to make. Now that's the most basic way to use a custom docker image. And it's enough for most projects that use common tools. But if we want to spice things up a bit, we'll need a custom docker file. So let's take a look at that. First, I'll create a docker file. I'll call it gitpod.docker file. In the docker file, I'll use gitpod slash workspace rust as the base image. Now I'll extend the image by installing some rust packages or tools. Similarly, we can also install things from other package managers such as apt, just to give you an idea. Finally, I can reference this file in my gitpod ML instead of the static image I defined here earlier. Let's run gpvalidate command to check if this new configuration works. This time it is building an image locally using my custom docker file. Alright, it started a debug workspace for me. I'll manually verify if all my commands produced the intended results. So it looks like the custom docker file is working as expected. Before closing the debug workspace, I want to point out a nifty feature of Gitpod's official docker images. They come with shell scripts located in the home slash bash rcd folder. This allows us to automatically execute commands each time a terminal is created. Imagine you want to dynamically set environment variable to store JSON data, like today's weather forecast. To try this out, I'll create a shell script called weather ashes. This simple command inside my weather ashes script will fetch the latest weather data and export it as an environment variable. After this, I can use a copy statement in my docker file to import the script. By this, we also learned that it's possible to reference files from our repository in a copy statement. Now let's try this out via the gpvalidate command. As you can see, the variable was indeed exported and contains the JSON data of the weather. So far, I've been using highly pre-configured images. You possibly won't need anything more to get going quickly. But if you want to take a step further to build a bare bones image from scratch, well, kind of, then keep watching. First, I'll create a backup of my current Docker file so that I can compare with it later. Then I'll change the image name to Ubuntu Latest. Since Ubuntu Latest is a minimal base image, I need to manually install a few extra packages to ensure compatibility with Gitpod. As a list requirement, Git and Bash are needed. On some distros, you might also need to install GNU C libraries. For convenience, 
I can also add things like sudo. With the dependencies added, I need to ensure that I have a group user created for gitpod with some specific parameters. Here I am also defining some environment variable, they come in handy. In this sudo hours line, I am configuring a passwordless sudo. Now I can select the gitpod user for all operations next to it. And here's another useful trick. You can define an interactive login shell to use that for the run statements. With this, we won't need to manually deal with shell environment dependencies in Docker. I'll install the Rust tooling too, as that's needed for compiling my project. I'll need to add a few more system dependencies, otherwise my Rust installation won't be functional. Refactoring some of the previous lines. Finally, I'll set up the bash rcd loader so that my weather SS script is still effective. And that's it. I'll open my backed up docker file to compare with what I had earlier. So it looks like I ended up creating my own version of gitpod's workspace rust image. Pretty cool, right? Let's do gp validate again to see if it still works. So the debug workspace launched and as you can see it is indeed quite a minimal ubuntu container at this point i'll just close the debug workspace and push my gitpod ml and docker file to my repository so back to the repository page now every time a gitpod workspace is created for this repository Gitpod will use the docker image configuration that I committed. There you have it, my custom docker image works in a real workspace too. That's all I had on this topic, be sure to check out the video description if you want to learn more. I will see you next time.